<laughs> Chiz was more bummed out about the chicken than even I was, and I was a little bummed out about it, despite about the fact what, having to kill it. So they here's the thing: with um, the chi- the the chicken kind of bonded with us. Like you know, during the heat of the day, a lot of times Chiz and I would just be lying there, and this chicken would be hanging with us. And on the first day, it got loose; it was really thirsty. And I like poured some of my water uh, in my metal cup, and it comes over there and is like drinking right out of my hand. And from then on, it was like a dog. Like it would come up to you, it would let you pet it, it would follow you around, it would kind of do this little chicken dance, all happy, and it would make gurgly noise. Like, blah, 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 this like, is fuck. the day that I charged the batteries, so I really yeah. wasn't present for most of this. So like from then on, the chicken was pretty cool. So I, I, and Chiz and I bonded with it a little bit, and we kind of liked it. And and neither of us wanted the chicken to die. We didn't want to cook the chicken toward the end. I don't know what we were going to do with it, but I, I wasn't, my vote wasn't kill the chicken, and neither was Chiz's. So, like, once it was dead, I, I was a little bummed out, but clearly, you know, I helped gut the thing, and, and I, was, I was a part of the process. Chiz was not as happy, although he did eat a lot of the chicken, um, so I I'm not most. sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's grief eating, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sad. <laughs> Openly weeping into the his former friend. <laughs> Jordy, would you have eaten the chicken? Uh, I wouldn't have killed it. No, I was because I, I watched the PK. I was like, okay, before I get on the show, I gotta be up to date with everything. And then like six other videos came. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to bed. <laughs> um, but I watched the PK. And I was like, oh, they they brought the chicken. You know, I was just laughing because you guys mentioned it earlier. And then all of a sudden, you guys are like, and now we're going to eat it. I was like, no way. <laughs> and then later on in the show, you guys are eating. It's terrible. Like, I, I wouldn't have killed it. I wouldn't even have brought it. I haven't. I would have brought to... a cow. Just bring a cow, you know. You can I chop was up wondering one why leg. you guys wouldn't bring <laughs> multiple chickens. Like, that would have been more entertaining. <laughs> well, one you a night. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe eggs. I had to right? carry this thing out yeah. there. If you watch the day, you... <laughs> like, hike in. It's it's thirty minutes of like going through jungle and shit. Like <laughs> way in, Chiz almost dies, and so by the time we get there, we're not thinking. You know what we should have done? Brought a bunch of chickens with us. Like no, the one chicken we carried in was like a burden enough. Yeah, I brought I was- a pet carrier, like big enough for like a cat or a small dog, and it dramatically increased like the amount of shit in my pickup, making it look. And we never oh, yeah. used the pet carrier. Yeah, there was a lot of volume to it. Like it. It took like it was like a quarter of our gear was actually <laughs> just the damn pet carrier. On the way out, we carried it all in one stop because there were like all the battle boxes. We were done with the packaging and stuff yep. like that. Um. So yeah, uh, the chicken was an interesting thing. I, I that was my idea. I think I, I like the idea of like befriending it and then naming it and then killing it because I knew the audience wouldn't. I knew that would shock a lot of people, and I like doing that. And and it's such a. It's such a weird thing to get shocked over to begin with Has, because you know, we all eat chicken nuggets and like that chicken in particular came from one of those factory farms that like all your chicken comes from. Uh, I spared it from you know a death sentence to you know be a free range chicken. It had for the a- best week of its life. I mean, it was walking around free range at the campsite eating like caterpillars off the ground and stuff. Now, uh, oh, has anyone heard the audio of the chicken death? Can no, you hear the machete swing or anything? Like that, that's what I want to know. I the, who dealt the blow? I blows. Man, the <laughs> blows. <laughs> so, Multiple so, times. I watched a video on how to kill a chicken and gut it and stuff because we had like this one bar flaky on and off connection, and uh, I managed to see a YouTube video like let it queue up, and what they did is they just cut its neck and let the heart pump it out, but they had a special contraption to hold the chicken. It was basically like a upside down milk jug, and they put its head through the hole. And they cut the bottom off, and his legs and stuff were sticking up. So anyway, they cut the chicken's neck, and his heart pumps the blood out of it really quickly. All right. Well, we didn't have that. But they did say, like, you know what? When you cut that, is it the femoral? No, the uh, jugular. When you cut the jugular, cut it harder than you think you need to. Because it's in nobody's best interest for this to take multiple tries. And I took that little piece of advice and applied it to chopping the head off. Like, I'm going to swing this machete as hard as I can swing a machete because <laughs> it's in nobody's best interest. Mine, Kyle, Chiz's, or Henrietta's for this thing to take more than one swing. Well, Kyle was holding the head in place. And I was holding like the chicken body with one hand and swinging the machete with the other. I took maybe three or four practice swings in the wood to make sure that I'd be accurate enough not to take any Kyle's fingers with me. He also had a um, a small log like over its head. And um, 
and that was to protect his, my hand to protect his fingers yeah yeah but it didn't leave me with like a strike zone that that would have really helped like if the log wasn't there and i'm glad it was there i don't want to get anyone's fingers but it would have been easier to hit the neck it was actually kind of difficult kyle says i struck it in the shoulders i don't know multiple if, times I, I <laughs> like you hit it at the joint where the wings sort of uh like like the wings go in and then the spines right through the middle and like that's the shoulders i watched you cleave his shoulders in two um and then I, and there was a lot of blood and the, like feathers went flying but the and then strike I was just zone like, was obscured by the log and my desire not to hurt kyle and you know so i i might have gone too low on it i blame is, myself did that first strike kill it or did you yeah. The second no, strike, the I think, kill it. I, I, I argue the second. And I, I think... Yeah, I, he was probably dead by the second. I think it really was the second. By the second one, I was through, like, his spine and his neck and whatever. It was the skin on the far side and, and like, even probably the feathers too. and stuff that was the last two blows. It took four blows, and I think by <laughs> two, it was done. <laughs> it's I think, like I said. It was like Theon Greyjoy taking <laughs> that blacksmith's head off. He's like, has to kick it at the end and everything <laughs> to, like, get the last bit to come loose. Um... I should have done that because I've done it a lot. Like I've literally cut thousands of chickens' heads off, and I'm really aware of like what it takes to do it. You could have like like if this is the chicken's head, you could have like grabbed it like this, and just kind of like slung like you were gonna you know body slam the chicken, and the head would have just popped right off. Like and it would have been insta killed. Like their heads are just barely on there, but you got to get the neck. Like the yeah, neck itself, you could have taken that machete that and like wrist flicked and like. Like just, like it, like a Mortal Kombat move, it'll come right off. I, their, their heads really are just barely on. I killed the chicken because I've never oh, killed yeah. anything with the exception <laughs> of that one nearly dead squirrel, and uh, and I, I felt like it was like an experience. Can, can you tell how much emotionally richer I am now? Having now <laughs> I've killed a chicken, and uh, Kyle on the other hand's killed a bunch of things. And I was like, you know what? I think I'd like to take something's life. Like I, let, let's give. I'll I'll give it a go. And thought process. Yeah. So um so anyway that that's why I did it. And that's why it was hard to do because, um, like I said, I, uh, one, my, my motivation not to hurt Kyle. And two, the, the log he was using to protect his fingers, log, big branch thing, um, yeah. was, was in, in my memory, covering part of the strike zone. Where you'd Probably so. Hit it. I, I, next time, um, don't worry, I have a specially designed chicken guillotine that Perfect. I'm going to be bringing along. Also have the chicken electric chair, so it's your choice. <laughs> I we'll, say the guillotine. We'll put I a straw really poll nice on the subreddit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Yeah, but uh, I can't believe. Yeah, when you started the story saying, "Well, I wanted to to get that head off, so I swung as hard as I could swing a machete." Like immediately, it's like, "Oh my god!" Like this thing, like you can press it down like a paper cutter in one of those things that cuts cardboard for that children's works? projects, and that would. Oh yeah, it'll come right off. Now, I will tell you, this particular machete was dull. Dr. Chiz literally took it and used it as a lawnmower, chopping in the dirt to clear the entire campsite. Ha just hacking the just ground up. Hacking. Can we talk about, Go can I on. tell the story of what happened when we got to base camp? <laughs> okay. All right, so, so we get there, and, and we, we agree on this spot. It's a little bit above the river, and it's, we agree on the spot, whatever. But there's, like, grasses growing out of the ground. Um, it's not like a leafy undergrowth there. It's, it's grasses. I feel like they had burnt this area to like prevent lots of buildup um like that that causes the big forest fires Sounds i feel right. like they had they had done that you know maybe a year or two in the past because there was scorched wood as well anyway there's tall grass like maybe shin height knee high uh and he's just hacking it all down with his machete which i was just thinking like why why are you doing that and 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 his hacks are go he wants it short and then I realized he wants it gone. He's pulling it up by the roots. and He's gardening over there. <laughs> he's, like, he's tilling the earth as if we're going to plant corn and start a new life. But he just wants a soft, like, you know, cushy spot to tread just on. Just a big old ashtray for him. <laughs> <laughs> then he gets out the shovel and he starts fucking digging his huge hole right in the middle of the campsite. And I'm just sitting over there watching. And, and he's like, I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm, I'm digging a uh, fire pit. And I'm thinking, like, I guess I'll just continue to gather the firewood by myself then. I'm, I'm just like, I'm not going to stop this fire pit nonsense. So I'll just go along with it. When I came back, he had a hole, like, this big. Like, big enough to, like, he could get down in, in it maybe. And it, they were making it deep. Like, it was going to be, like, this deep, I think. And then I showed and then, up. And then Woody shows up, and he's like, 
you know, Chiz now has Patrick digging the hole, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick's over there, like, breaking his back. She's just like, yeah. <laughs> Real good. So he like, gave him the old the Tom smoke. Sawyer treatment of, like, you ever painted a fence before? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to try digging this hole. It's great. <laughs> Some old school American trickery. He pulls on Patrick somehow. You ever dig a hole? <laughs> oh, you've never lived. <laughs> you know, Patrick's digging this deep ass hole in the middle of the forest, and Woody's like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I immediately put a stop to it. They're like, we're digging a hole for the fire. And I'm like, well, that's kind of the opposite of what we want. <laughs> you know, neither of yeah. them knew they weren't camping people. You know, you want the least amount of airs possible getting to the fire, right? Otherwise, it'll blow out. Taylor, I didn't know what you knew, but I do now. You know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you if you put the fire in a hole, you're you're pretty much smothering it. You know, only the top yeah. of it is, is getting any air and you want the base of it to be breathing. So by you know, we, we filled in the hole and had better fires all week. <laughs> do you think that he actually thought that was the thing to do? Yeah. Or he just was like manufacturing a task for him while Kyle's <laughs> like, hey, I'm going to go get some firewood. Want to come help? Just like, oh, no, I've got uh, a fire hole. <laughs> I'm on fire hole duty. <laughs> it, that's, it's one of the reasons why it's hard to work in groups because everybody wants to be doing something. And everybody, sometimes you'll pick a task in your head. You're like, oh, this thing needs to get done and it's going to be my thing. And if anybody comes in and is like, hey, your thing's really not important. It, it, it's like, oh, how dare you? How dare you invalidate me and my thing? And so it's, <laughs> it's, it can be really touchy. So like, I don't like to say anything when somebody's doing their thing. Uh, Meanwhile, um, so I, it took me a nanosecond. What the? What's this whole shit? <laughs> you know, we can't have <laughs> Put that. Put that cigarette out. Fill this up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I felt like the only thing that we should have... I felt like, like more of everyone's time should have been spent gathering firewood. I felt like I gathered so much goddamn firewood. I would go off into the woods and I'd bring back these trees that were about this big around. Like, not a huge tree, right? I get it. But a tree, nonetheless, it's like 12 feet long. And I'd have at least two of them, maybe four of them, like two in each hand. And I'd drag them all the way back to camp and I'd drop them. And I'd look. And Chiz would have like 